Welcome back, everybody. Um, <clears throat> today's video may not be too exciting to some of you, and some of you may be interested in this kind of stuff. But what our project's gonna be today is getting ready to, getting my spot ready to build a sawmill shed. Now I've had my wood miser here for, oh gosh, about two years now. And just the engine and stuff up there, I've kept wrapped up in a tarp. The rest of it, you know, it's sitting out in the weather. And I can't stand stuff sitting out in the weather, but I just simply ain't had time to do anything about it. And I don't have any shelter space that I can stick this thing under. So I do know that in this area right here is where I want my sawmill to be pretty much permanently all the time because I've got all this gravel spot here that I can work. So no matter how wet it may be, cause this is something I tend to do when it's a little bit on the wetter side and I can't get out and do any other type of work. So no matter, so no matter how wet it is, I can get down here and operate this sawmill as long as I've got the logs up here for it. So the first thing that's gonna have to be done is we're gonna actually hook to the sawmill and take it down. This will be the first time I've taken it down in, oh man. Almost since I've had it. I've moved it maybe once since I've had it. But this will be the first time it's been taken down. So it's not that, it's really not that big of a deal to take down. But we're gonna hook to the sawmill and move it out of here. And I've got a uh, big pile of sawdust over here that needs to be cleaned up anyways. And this is something I'm gonna have to keep in mind when I build my shed is I'm gonna have to have access to get in here and clean this sawdust out once I actually build the shed. So let me show you over here where I'm planning on putting the shed. I'm gonna actually move the sawmill to this area where all this junk sitting. And in case you didn't know it, I have a problem with just throwing stuff down. I don't know. I'm bad about this, y'all. Just look at just look at this mess. This didn't happen overnight either. It just constantly add to it. I just Got some leftover gutter drain pipe from a job we done. Got some old rotten logs that ain't any good anymore. Got my ramps for the sawmill and got some cages that were around all my fruit trees down here. Got some old tin that I intended on putting over top of the lumber I've milled up. Well, guess what? That never happened either, so. That's one thing that I'm gonna try to work on this year. Well, we're coming up on the new year here. It's almost 2023. Everybody always makes New Year's resolutions. My New Year's resolution is to actually do better at finishing the jobs I start, staying more organized, and just trying to really stay on top of things because I tend to let myself get wound up in the work I've been doing. And then... I end up with a lot of stuff like this where I've just thrown something down and then I have to deal with it later on to whereas I'm going to actually try to deal with something like if just like these cages right here I just threw them in there when we took them off the trees so I'm going to try to do better at that I'm going to put these cages somewhere where they're up out of the way they're not laying here but you know just for instance anything when I get done with it I'm going to put it up and I'm terrible about that, y'all. I mean, if you probably pay attention in all my videos, you look around in the background and you see stuff just laying everywhere. And I'm gonna try my best this year to get out of that. But anyways, the sawmill shed is definitely up on my priority list for this winter. Because many of you know, I work outside, do lawn care, landscaping, stuff like that, and we farm. And winter time is sort of your downtime that you have to work on projects like this. So we're gonna do our best to get this one going. And I'm hoping that if I go ahead and get started on getting this spot ready, that'll drive me to actually finishing it. So we'll see how that works. I've actually already got some power poles laying over here that we're gonna be using for the post. Um, they're buried in all this grass. I've used a few of them. I've got several in here, but I have used a few of them. But yeah, these are most likely be what we use for the post. We're just gonna have to fish them out of there. Got this old snow plow here. 
so that I bought brand new from my dump truck that's been used one time. I've tried and tried and tried to sell this thing on Facebook and I haven't had any luck with it, but anyways, I am not in the snow plowing business anymore. So hopefully one of these days I can get that thing gone. But anyways, like I said, first job is to get this sawmill hooked up to the Kubota here and move it out of the way. Then we're gonna put the grapple on the tractor, move all these logs, and get that box blade moved out. I've got a little bit of lumber under part of this tin right over here. We're gonna get all that out. We're gonna get this sawdust pile smoothed up. And once I get all that cleaned up, I'll talk about one other issue I'm gonna have with this location. But I think I can fix it. It's just gonna take me some time and a little bit of money. So let's get this thing hooked up and moved. So as I mentioned before, taking this mill down is not that big of a problem. You can see right, actually uh, my rope come off the track. I didn't realize it and look at what it done. Honestly, I didn't realize it eat that rope up that bad. But anyways, so I've got off subject here. So all you do is take down, we've got six jack legs up and down the mill here. And it come, the mill actually comes with a handle that fits this nut, but I found it a whole lot easier to take an inch and a quarter socket put it on a drill well i said that i think my battery's dead Battery, this thing's just really tight one there we go but you can spin that up a whole lot faster than you can spin it up with a jack handle look you can tell how long this has been sitting here Look on top of that jack leg at the dirt that's washed up on it. So really the only thing left to do when you you take all four, I mean all six of these jack legs up and you're too you can leave one front one up here and that'll actually act as your jack to lift the hitch up and down oh and i've got to go find the key to fit that but um yep you can use your front one to act like a uh, just like a regular trailer jack but anyways when you go to set this mill back up all you have to do is get it fairly level with your jack legs <clears throat> and then take an actual level i take, I use a four foot level and and level it both ways at each jack and that's very important is having this thing set up level but um i'm gonna get the rest of these jacks run up and then we'll hook it up to the kubota here and get this thing moved out of the way hey so as i just found out really hadn't thought about it it's been a long time like i said since i took the mill down you want to make sure you lock your power head before you go to attempt to move this thing. So I got all the jacks up. I had a little bit of trouble because you can see how all this is crusted up. It's been really, really cold here for the past week. And today it's actually rather nice, honestly. Feels really good out here. But um, all of that sawdust over there was still frozen around that jack. So even though I was winding that jack up, it was still kind of trying to hold the saw down. And, uh, then all of a sudden, the power head started rolling towards the back, which uh, you have to move it to right over the wheels right here anyways when you transport it to get the weight off of the tongue. And you've actually got a locking mechanism right here that locks your head. Well, I was like, shoot, I'm just going to move it a few feet. There ain't no need me locking that power head down. Well, I guess I didn't realize just how easy that thing free rolled. And there it went towards the end of the, towards the back of the mill. And now my tongue's way up here in the air. So all we got to do, I think, to fix that is turn the uh, turn the power on over there and just roll it backwards. I'm hoping that's all it takes anyway. I didn't go quite as easy as I thought it did. I guess I should have let that front jack down up there first. I just really wasn't thinking about that. Heck, I've done forgot all about how this thing works. Now I remembered I gotta let the 
gotta let your saw head down all the way too. It's bad when you don't use something. Well, you don't move it and you forget how everything's supposed to operate. All right, I see exactly what I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to put this back jack leg back down. I had to go up here to the front and wind that jack leg up. That should take away that angle. And hopefully, this thing will stay up here when I hit it. Yeah. Just set that up like that. Then I'll have to come back down. I'll have to raise the saw head up and come back down into it. There we go. locked into position so it can't roll back and forth anymore if i'd have just done this to start with i'd have saved myself a whole lot of time and a whole lot of heartache but it wasn't that bad so now like i said i can use that front jack up there to act as my hitch jack and i can run it up and down and lower it down onto my ball. All right, so I've got two inch ball on the back of the RTV here. And that's what size this thing takes is the two inch. So we're gonna back up to it and see if we can't get her hooked up. First time she's been moved. First time she's been moved in almost two years. So this thing was due to be picked up and moved anyways. I need to get this sawmill mess cleaned up here. Make sure I take these off. So I'd hate to have to buy those things right there new again. We don't want to lose them, so.
There she is. He's hooked up. Let's get this thing moved out of the way and next project will be getting that sawdust over there scooped up. See, all this right here is the main reason I bought a mobile sawmill. It wasn't for me to go out and do jobs, do, do different jobs for different people with. I may do that at some point, but I'll be honest with you. It was just because of the simple fact that, you know, we've got, between me and my daddy, we've got a, you know, decent amount of land up here that, and sometimes getting the, the logs to the mill is a whole lot harder than bringing the mill to the logs. So I've actually got a piece of land up the road here where I've got a pretty decent log pile that was cut about um, back in the early spring. And I'm wanting to go mill those up. Those are actually the next logs that I'm planning on milling. And so this thing needed to be moved anyways. And as you can see, definitely needed to be moved so I could clean out this sawdust pile. And I've just let this whole mess just get carried away. So. We're gonna get this cleaned up. But, like I said, this is the whole reason I wanted a mobile mill was to be able to move it around my place. And I didn't know where I wanted to even put the thing when I bought it. So I was like, well, I can set it up in a location, saw with it there. Hey, if I don't like it there, I'll move it. So that was the whole plan all along. And I finally decided I do want this to be kind of like the permanent location, but I still have the ability to move it from one place to the other if I want to. Anyways, I'm gonna go get my little Kubota with the uh, loader and get this sawdust scooped up. And then we'll change it out and put the grapple on and get these logs and all this other mess picked up. And then, like I said, I've got one issue to show you with this location that is gonna take a little bit of effort to get fixed before we actually build the shoe. So let's go get that tractor and get the rest of this stuff started. So while I'm letting the little Kubota warm up there, I got to get this tin right here. And there's actually uh, some boards, some old white oak boards under this tin here. That was some of the very first lumber I cut on this mill. And I wrapped it up in this tin and never used it because honestly, I, I was just playing around and didn't have no use, no purpose or anything for that lumber. So uh, apparently I didn't need it, did I? <laughs> Just as I figured, that sawdust pile is froze on top of that tent. So I'm actually gonna have to take the tractor first and probably bust that loose before I can get this tent up.
Y'all, there's a lot of sawdust here. Look at that, that's just a frozen chunk of sawdust. So, this is part of my next issue, is the water that comes down through here. Look at the water that's washed out on top of that piece, I mean the dirt that's washed out on top of that piece of tin. <sighs> this is why you don't need to leave stuff sitting for longer than it should. So now, this piece of tin is holding down this piece of tin, which is held also down by the sawdust, which has got to be moved out of here before I get done cleaning this mess up. So I guess I'm going to have to get all this junk off of here and try to get this piece of tin up and out of all that dirt.
we got the tin out of the way laying all over here I'm gonna have to wash that off I did not realize how much dirt had washed up on that tin look at how deep look at that that's that much dirt had washed down through here and then landed on that tin but I have used some of this wood because this was full right here. I forgot I used a couple pieces out of this for uh, some of them raised beds we were doing. But, um, yeah, like I said, all of this was just cut as my very first lumber on the mill. I was just playing. Didn't have a clue what I was doing. And still, <laughs> sometimes still I don't halfway know what I'm doing. But uh, it's time for this stuff to get out of here and be put up somewhere else. And I mean, this this mess needs to be took care of. Either, even if I wasn't planning on building a sawmill shed here, this mess needs to be taken care of. This has gotten a little out of hand. So now I just got to figure out where I'm gonna put the rest of this stuff. It's the problem. I don't have enough room to put anything. But um, anyways, I'm gonna get this. Go dump these boards out of this bucket. And I guess I'm gonna end up having to come back down here with the forks and just get this tin up and get the rest of this lumber up before I do anything else. I'm not sure. Anyways, we'll see what I do. This ended up being a bigger project than I thought it was gonna be. Oh well, we'll get it done today one way or the other. All right, so y'all, um, I imagine this looks a little different than what you saw just now. It's actually now, two days later from when I started the video. I got a guinea up here going crazy. But um, it's actually two days later from when I started the video because I kind of run out of time that day and I didn't want to bore y'all to death with me moving this stuff. But here's what we got now. And as you can see, still got a mess to clean up. I'm thinking I'm going to take the box blade and uh, drag all this stuff around and try to pile it up and then scoop it up. But right now it's just too muddy because in between when you've seen me film and now, or when between, in between when I started the video and now, it has rained a lot. And uh, as you can see right there, just where I married up, um, it's wet. But I moved these power poles out of here. You can tell they've been sitting here for a while. Look at how this grass has grown up in them. That stuff, uh, yeah, they were completely covering the power poles. I couldn't even see the power poles laying in there. But anyways, what I'm gonna do right now is just lay off this spot and try to get a rough idea of where I want the building to be exactly. And I'm gonna show you some issues that I've got to, de to deal with before I actually build this building. Um, so I come down here yesterday while it was raining and just watch the water run and i've got a lot of water coming down this road which up up here i've got the water turned off of this road but it's still between what's here and there it it runs in this road then it runs off the building from there and there and there but there's a lot of water that comes from this side and runs down and it all gathers about right here and then runs straight down to where I want to put the building so kind of what i'm thinking is i'm going to put some sort of catch basin right there and i'm going to pipe it underneath this and let it run right under the building and try to build this up over here which i don't think it's going to take a lot to do i'm going to have to get a load of gravel in here anyways before i actually put it up so i'm thinking that if i get a load of gravel in here and spread it thick enough that'll probably be enough to keep it from continually w washing this away. But like I said, I wanna put a catch basin right up there and it'll drain from that way, that way, and everything, catch it all right there. And it'll pipe, be piped out off of this bank over here. Right here, you can see a pretty good gully that's washed into this. And Y'all, we've just had a lot of hard rain lately, too. This isn't normal. 
but it is something that I'll have to deal with. So uh, it's, not, it's not normal for us to have the rain that we've had lately. But um, like I said, I think if I get this built up fairly flat that I'm not going to have that big of issue, if, especially if it's catching all that water right up there. Anyways, we'll see. Leave it down in the comments. Let me know what you think about that. But anyways, I'm going to mark off this building roughly about where I want it. And hey, look at there. Oh, okay. I thought that was one, one whole nother pole lift and lay it in there, but that's just a short piece. Uh, yep, I thought I'd missed one. But anyways, I'm going to lay it off and we'll see if we can't get a rough idea of just exactly where the building will be. And I'm thinking I'm going to make it right about 20 foot long. I'm going to go over here and measure the sawmill, the length of it. But I think about 20 foot long is going to be about perfect. And it's not going to be very deep like that way at all. The building will be sitting long ways across here. And so it won't be deep that way at all. Just going to be pretty much wide enough that I can put the mill under it and still have some extra room on the sides to where maybe I can possibly be down here milling when it's raining or something like that. But anyways, let's see what we can do here about setting this off. that's 20 foot long and 12 foot deep and chances are i'm going to go longer this way but that's just the section where the mill will be sitting and i'm going to have to rig me up a beam once i put these posts in a beam that'll stretch all the way across to support the weight of the shed without having a post right here in the middle because this will be where I'm unloading and loading logs onto the mill. And I don't want a post in my way. But um, anyways, yeah, I'm probably going to actually make this longer. So it'll probably come on out to at least right in here. You know, I'll lay it out and just figure. But I can't go too much farther because I've, I've got a pipe that comes out right, right here that goes under all of this and catches off of a ditch over there on the other side of the fence. But, um, yeah, we have to deal with a lot of water right here. <laughs> but anyways, this is the start of it right here. So hopefully I stick to my plan and I actually get this thing put under shed here because I am getting tired of my meal sitting out in the rain. Um, right now I've got it backed up under there I've got to move that here right now so I can get my other truck up there hooked up to the trailer, my mower trailer that's under there. I've already got this tractor loaded up on this truck with the uh, the Woodland Mills chipper. See it there? And we've got a tree we got to go get cleaned up tomorrow. And so I like to, I like to, um, get ready the day before anytime i'm going to be doing a job that way that morning i can just tear out everything's ready to go um but anyways i've got to get this stuff ready and 
So I guess I'm gonna do that. It's too muddy to work down here now. But hopefully the sawmill shed will actually come to be. And I won't be just getting something started here and then forgetting about it, like I typically do. Because usually what happens is the jobs that I do to make money obviously come first over the stuff that's got to be done at home. And I'm hoping that this winter, while we're sort of in our slow spell here, that I can actually prioritize this and get this done. So we'll see, because usually once springtime hits, stuff around here kind of gets put on the back burner till the next winter, except for stuff that has to be done. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.